So the driving concept behind this campaign was to figure out exactly what AI thrives better, an AI with technology and superior units, or an AI that gets more settlers from the very beginning, as well as obviously more cities. And I figured the best way to test this question is to do some sort of a North America campaign where we have the Europeans and their colonies with these units and with these technologies versus the Native Americans who are going to have more land from the very beginning. Now I must admit this is by far the hardest AI only campaign I had to set up because there are a lot of different layers to it. Uh, there are just there are just multiple layers that I had to find and get through. I mean just just for one to find a good North American map. Um, and as you can see, I don't I haven't included a lot of of the Canadian region. Obviously, it's mainly just the USA as well as northern Mexico, and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, and that's part of the reason why is because the beginning tests when Canada was here and when the you know the whole I mean Canada is huge obviously and uh, there are not there's not that many tribes located within that region so obviously those tribes would absolutely dominate and it wasn't fair so that's why I've chosen this map uh, and, and and as you'll know you'll probably see some of the tribes not in the exact location as they might be historically um, but I, I, I had to you know find a I had to find a nice balance in between what worked for the game and how we could cause conflict, but at the same time being, you know, somewhat within the region. Again, you know, these tribes are starting off with four settlers, so they will more than likely get to that spot. I'm, I'm hoping that they get into the territory or the region that um, is known to uh, is known to us, I guess you could say. So, like I said. They're starting off with regular Emperor difficulties because we are playing on Emperor difficulty. And uh, in terms of the details, we have all the victory types on because this is about to fi this is about figuring out exactly how the AI functions better. Uh, so we are playing on Emperor difficulty, standard speed, standard map, uh, obviously ancient era. There's no city raising, no barbarians. There is ruins. There are ruins. Quick combat, quick movements, as well as the random personalities. So just because the Europeans and some of those uh, civs that you might be used to are involved, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to act the same so like i said the iroquois or the iroquois i know you guys get frustrated at me uh saying it's either way but uh the the, the native americans are going to start off with no technologies at all and that's the way I, i've done it here um as well now but instead the europeans as well as their colony which canada the u.s as well as mexico are involved here because i have to include i wanted to include as many civs as i could uh possibly and let's go ahead and go to the next turn uh as i pops possibly could because i couldn't fit there's not really that many modded native americans so uh i figured it'd be just more fun to get all the you know everyone in there and, and all the civ five nations uh not only just because originally the plan was just to do spain and france and england but then i was like you know for the people that uh maybe want to root for the usa or for canada or for mexico let's go ahead and include those guys in there and then you know so they're getting the same the same abilities the same uh sort of bonuses as as i guess they're over their former overlords or i guess they're not overlords in this game but you you know what I mean? They're they're uh, they're mat. I don't know. Masters is not a good term, but yeah. Anyways, so they're getting the same bonuses. So what what I've done here, and I'll I'll, I'll show I'll go into the info to info addicts and show you just how drastic uh, it is. And, and you could probably see. I mean, we've got Minutemen out here. We've got uh, we've got we have Terracios from Isabella. We have mu uh, Musketeers. We have Musketeers from Napoleon. The the uh, the AIs from the east coast which you know and we've kind of like put them in certain regions like mexico's in kind of modern day mexico i've given france uh you know louisiana spain i was hoping for more of a spanish florida because it was kind of hard to fit spain spain in there you know the usa uh england and then canada up here let me just go and go ahead and show you guys exactly what i mean uh, in terms of the bonuses this is how far the europeans and the co and their colonies are ahead uh, yes, you'll see myself here, and I'm just viewing as Venice. So the Native Americans are at zero technologies right now, as well as everybody else. The other six nations are at 34. So this is going to be this is going to mean two things for the AI, as well as I have given them uh, faith early on, so that more than likely they're going to get up their own. Uh, maybe, possibly they might get up their own religion, depending on the pantheon that they choose. Um, so what this means is that the AI is going to, wow, how does he already have musk, uh, riflemen? That is really impressive. Uh, so what the AI is going to have to do is, is, oh, oh, because they grabbed a, a ruin. That's hilarious. They grabbed a ruin that upgraded the uh, the musketmen 
to the next level up. That is insane. So what the AI is going to have to do if, if you're playing as one of the colonies or one of the Europeans is you're going to want to go to war with these Native Americans in the early parts of this game because if you don't go early on, then bad things are going to happen. I promise you guys, those Native Americans are going to catch up. They will catch up. I This this has probably been the most excruciating uh, campaign setup, I guess, AI-only map that I've ever had to do. I had to do so many different tests and it was just crazy because I had so many things going all over the place for it. I, I had to find these I had to find these uh these mods, these Native Americans. I mean I'm surprised that I was even actually able to find this many Native American mods and I'm just thankful that I am. Unfortunately, you know, I know I, I know that we you know we briefly talked about it, but I understand that, you know, the Mayan, the Zapotec and the Aztecs are not absolutely not uh in their correct locations, but I wanted to include them in this game and this is actually going to be a very intense region of the the map uh, here with Mexico, the Aztecs, the Mayan, and the Zapotec. Uh, and actually, if anyone, if any of the Native American tribes are going to be able to stand up to these colonies and the Europeans, it's going to be the Aztecs. Because they're Jaguars, I understand their Jaguars aren't super powerful, but they do have one of the only unique units that replace, replaces the warrior. So they might be doing, they might be doing okay. They might be doing a little bit better than uh, we all think. So like I was saying, the Europeans and the colonies, they're going to have to go to war soon. Because the Native Americans, they will catch up. I, I, I swear, they, they're going to catch up because with time, these Europeans are going to get down four cities really, really quick. Before turn 10, they're going to have four cities down. Uh, whereas the Europeans and their colonies probably only will have, I mean, I've given them a second settler, as you can see. Uh, so they, they'll have like two, but that still might not be enough. I mean, that's the whole that's the whole point. Um, so the native the, the Native Americans are going to have to stay defensive early on, and and you know there are a couple there are a couple regions that I'm really interested in watching out for, and that is um, I guess kind of here with the the Iroquois uh, and maybe England and 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 America. If the Iroquois can survive for long enough, then they will get, build up the technology to catch up and defend themselves a little bit better. Um, same, same goes for Mexico and the Aztecs and the Mayans is that if, if, if the Aztecs can survive for long enough, then, then they'll be okay. But it's, it's going to be intense because yes, I mean, you're talking about sieves that, that have no technologies going up against sieves that are in the Renaissance era. Uh, so I guess in terms of my own pick, uh, and, and I know it seems crazy because when I thought of the idea initially, I was like, this is not fair. This is absolutely not fair, but it is, I, I swear. Now, you are going to have some of the nations in the beginning. There might be a few empires that fall. Uh, it's possible. I've seen it I've seen it many ways where sometimes no Native American uh, falls. Sometimes no Native Americans even lose a city. If, 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 the, if the colonies and the Europeans are not aggressive enough, then, then it's going to be a bad. It's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really bad. Uh, so in terms of my own pick, I, I would say... I, I am liking the Aztecs, and as you can see, the way I've set up the map is I've left a lot of central U.S. Uh, open. That way, it's it's all fair game, and that's just kind of where everything goes. I know that there, um, I, I I know that, you know, I I wanted to kind of I, I push the boundaries of where I could take some of these tribes at, just so that we could have an open map because this is a little bit more interesting to see uh, where all the AIs take their colonies, and as these nations grow and these these nations turn into these massive sprawling empires, um, it gets really really intense right here in the middle of the USA. And and one thing that I really am excited for this campaign is just to see exactly who controls each each state by the end of the game. You know what I mean? Like, as we can see now, Mexico controls a lot of Texas, and the Aztecs control a lot of Texas, and I want to see who's going to go control California, of course, uh, where I live, somewhere within this, within this region. I'm not sure exactly L.A., um, but I still haven't made my pick yet. I am honestly thinking... Um, I, I, I haven't really thought about it too closely, but I am thinking the Sioux could be successful here. Um... I think the, the I think the Sioux could be successful, and for those of you that aren't familiar with the mods, of course you can guys you guys can check the description below, and uh, I will be including a link as well as their unique abilities uh, in the description below, explaining like what their powers are or their powers. I don't know if I'm <laughs> talking about superheroes here or what. Uh, you know what some of the the things that benefit their empire, their bonuses to their empire, uh, and then you can you know follow that to the Steam page if you'd like to download that mod. Of course, uh, I will keep that 
uh, always within the description of these series is if you guys ever like a, a certain sieve. Uh, so yeah, I, I am thinking the, the Sioux might have a successful game here. Remember they have their bison. When they get into plains, they have a pretty successful game usually. And here they are. They're already popping up their wild bison. Uh, this is an exclusive resource for them. And... Um, I think that they could be good. I mean, if they continue to expand out towards the uh, towards the plain region, then they might do well. Um, I think the Aztecs are also pretty high on my list of how successful they can be. Oh, I didn't even realize. So the Aztecs have kind of kind of blocked off the Mayan here. Uh, luckily for the Mayan, they were able to sneak out two settlers. So I don't think that there's going to be any wars that pop up too early. I, I don't believe so. Oh, wow. Look at this. Look at the tension between Spain and France already in the very beginning. Uh, it's funny because that's something that I have noticed somewhat sometimes in some of the uh, the test runs that I have, have, have gone through is that sometimes the Europeans are too preoccupied with fighting themselves to fight the Native Americans, which gives the Native Americans time to to get up their own technology and to, to rebuild and and to catch up. And because one thing that's going to benef benefit these native tribes a lot is is cargo ships and, and caravans. Um, now, cargo ships, not so much because I don't believe that there is any native that starts, started off coastal. Uh, the only people that started off coastal were the Europeans and their colonies. But the caravans are going to benefit um, – a lot from, I mean, the natives are going to benefit a lot from the caravans. And it depends because I, I think that there is some somewhat of a rivalry that goes down here. There is definitely somewhat of a rivalry that goes between, um, you know, some of the nations with higher technologies. And I, I, I don't know. I have seen other games where the Europeans will team up and the colonies will team up to fight off uh, some of the natives. But we'll see. Uh, as you can see, as you can see, I guess I should say, uh, the Zapotec already have their four cities down. A lot of the natives in general have a lot of their cities down, whereas the colonies are going to be stuck with two. So you have to remember now one thing, one key thing to remember that I want to remind everybody um, is that just because they have 34 technologies discovered as of right now, that doesn't mean they still, their empires are just now starting off, which means they're going to have to generate a lot of science to get that moving. They might be stuck at 34 technologies or 34 science for a while because, well, I mean, let's be honest, they're, they're not generating the, the science per turn to be able to get the next requirement for the other technologies in the Renaissance era. So I just want to remind people that before they start freaking out, like, oh, this is not even fair. Uh, it, it is. I would not do this campaign if it wasn't fair. I'm actually more worried about the Europeans and, and their colonies. And I guess I should I should stop calling them their colonies. Uh, but uh, and, and the the North American nations like the USA, the Canadians and Mexico um, in terms of if I had to choose. So my, my native choice is the Sioux um, in terms of just the Europeans or the the nations of North America. I, I'm actually thinking Mexico. And again, we will be taking like little spotlights, uh, little timeouts to to look at exactly what their, you know, maybe unique units are, their unique bonuses, their unique buildings, whatever it may be. But I'm I'm choosing Mexico. If they if they're able to attack the Aztecs fast enough, then they could possibly control this region. Uh, again, this is going to be an incredibly um, warring region. And and it all depends on how it begins, though. Like who wh who strikes up the friendships first? Who who decides to attack what? Um, it, it really will depend. I think if the natives stick together, then if if the Zap Zapotec supports the Aztecs from the west, then I I actually believe that they can maybe stand up to the Mexican army. I think they could. Um, you know, it, it's all about numbers, and it, it depends. It, it depends on several factors, but. I think it's possible, and I have seen it happen before, um, so we'll have to wait and see. I think that it looks like France and Spain are probably going to be at each other's, at each other's throat, throats for a little bit here. Um, and, of course, I should, you know, I don't think I, uh, of course, I'll remind anyone that, that may not know, if you leave a comment in the section below here, just giving me the one nation you think will win this game, I will give you a shout-out at the end of the video, uh, or it might be a, it might be a shout-out, or, or I'll throw your name up at the very end, congratulating you for picking the right choice. This is not a bad one. Oh, look at the Iroquois uh, moving down south here kind of towards Georgia, South Carolina area, Florida. Who knows where they're going? But uh, this is an interesting forward settling. Ooh, I don't know if Spain's going to like that very much. You're taking hold of uh, maybe Spanish Florida, or maybe maybe Isabella thought, expected Spanish Florida at some point, but maybe she's not going to get it. I don't know, because this is going to be a good good spot. So, yeah, like I said, you guys can, of course, leave your your 
uh, your opinion. Please just pick one nation. I think there's only, I believe there's only 16 nations to choose from. So that's really good chances, especially if you've seen my other campaigns, which I will, of course, link in the description below again. Uh, like the AI only world, it's like there's 42 different nations. Of course, that's going to be really difficult to choose from. Um, this is, you got some pretty good chances, I would say. I would say some pretty dang good chances. Uh, now, here we go. Most literate people. See, they're still stuck at 34 technologies, um, whereas everyone else is now starting to catch up. So it's, it's something to keep in mind. And, and again, the ruins are helping. I, I, I of course, choose, uh, I chose to include the ruins. That way we can have uh, – I didn't want to kind of jip anyone like the Shoshone out of their unique ability uh, or, I guess, their Pathfinder's ability. Is, is it – yeah, their Pathfinder's ability, right? Not anybody else? Pretty sure, but uh, I also think the Shoshone could have a pretty successful successful game. Uh, of course, you know the Shoshone naturally are really good Civ. Um, they're they're just the AI is, is programmed really well. But then again, you know, like I said, random, uh, random technologies. I'm sorry, random personalities is a factor. So you know, we might not see like the same sort of. The same thing that we're used to from Pocatello. We're not, we might not same, see the same thing that we're used to from Isabella or, or well, we're not, I mean, Canada's a mod, but, you know, the same thing we're used to from Washington. Normally, Washington is extremely expansive. So the fact that he, well, I mean, nobody else uh, as of, you know, the Europeans or, or the other nations of North America, they haven't really gotten up their own settler yet either. He's probably more concerned with many other things right now, but... I think that the war should be really interesting, and I think that the Europeans have the next 150 to 200 turns before their lead becomes insignificant. Uh, so they got to get moving. They got to declare war, and they can't declare war on each other if they're going to want to have a successful campaign. Because if they wait too long, the natives will build up. They will catch up. They'll, they'll catch up in technology, and they'll kick them off of their own continent. So that's going to be. This is going to be really, really fun. I'm really, really excited for this campaign. As I said, I had some trouble uh, getting it to work. Um, um, I, I, I had some trouble with the uh, the Blackfoot mod, um, the Black the Blackfoot tribe. There was something going on, and and it was just kind of a complete mess. I did try to include them before anyone asks, um, but they were not working. But I had to, you know, I really struggled to get this to work. But I wanted to get it to work so bad because it just it was the first just exclusive region, it, it, kind of the U.S. region. And I know that a lot of you guys might. Uh, thoroughly enjoy exactly what empire you fall under uh, in, in terms of, you know, th for those of you that live in the U.S. So anyways, we had another Pathion founded, and um, I think I'll have to stop it right there for now, and we'll get into some of the mods and some of the unique abilities, and we'll see uh, exactly what's going on now that I've explained to you the campaign, but I'm really, really excited. If you're excited for this, please leave a like. It helps out tremendously, and if you think you might know who wins, or who, who I guess who might win, uh, please leave a comment in the section below. You might as well make a guess, because who knows? I mean, any anyone can win at this point. I have no idea. I mean, my choices have never. I don't. I think I've only picked like once. I've only picked it like right, maybe one or two times. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.